Hey friends, one of my favorite musicians and arguably one of the best electronic composers of all time, Trent Reznor famously said, there's something strangely musical about noise. In this video, we're gonna take a look at what he was talking about and some of the ways that you can apply white noise to your own mixes. So if you're stoked, let's do it. Okay, so in this first example, before I really reveal anything, many of you won't even be able to know what's going on until it's gone. So just listen really closely. Hear that? Now it's back. And now it's gone. So what's going on there? I have a simpler just playing a loop of tape noise, okay? That's all that this is. Let's take a look at the track. So if I solo the track, this is what the tape noise sounds like just as a raw sample. Okay. That's a very pleasing noise. Kind of sounds something like a fan just blowing in your apartment or something, right? But what I did is I went ahead and swept out. If you look at the frequency range here, let's go ahead and turn on this EQ and turn off this filter. If you look at the frequency range, Got a lot of low end in there. A lot of this stuff just isn't really useful for me, right? Even though it's a pleasing sound, I just wanted to get kind of just the top end of it. You can see I'm kind of boosting the brilliance range, right? Uh, 6K and above, okay? And the reason I'm doing that is what I'm doing is I'm adding what sounds like to me this like bright fidelity to this music, right? So without this, it sounds like this. So to me, the mix without the noise sounds very clinical, very clean, very just kind of lifeless. Like there's nothing really going on. When you turn this noise on, you get. Now inside of this noise, there's some stuff in the top end that's kind of like clicks in there. Listen. Right, and those things, it just kind of hits at random. It's just kind of like extra stuff. Now, of course, this is a little bit louder than I normally would have this in the mix, but this is something I almost always do. And you'll notice if you listen to a lot of music, this is something that a lot of music does. We came up listening to music out of, you know, tape decks, out of vinyl players, and stuff like that. And for the longest time, these, the just the root sound of those machines just running by themselves without any actual music coming through them, there was a layer of noise on everything. And noise can really make up for a lot of inconsistencies in your mix. So really, I would probably normally have this maybe like around something like here. So listen without it first. I'll turn it back on. That's just adding that extra little bit of fidelity to this mix. So in order to do this method, you need some raw noise samples. And fortunately, musicradar.com has this sample pack that you can download. I'll put a link in the description and in the comments so you can grab it. Um, but they just have all kinds of different noises. So let's go ahead and just build this up real quick. I'll just mute this track for now. Make a MIDI track. I will go to these samples that I downloaded. There's these different noise samples. So I'll just go ahead and take this first one, okay? And we'll drag and drop that into a blank MIDI track. What that does is always makes a simpler, okay? The next thing I need to do is I need to make a C3 note, okay? And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna play this whole note. In fact, I'll go ahead and make this twice as long or th four times as long, okay? And we'll just take one note and drag it across here. And let's just take a listen to what we have now. Crank this up to zero so we can really listen. So we can hear there's a lot of pleasing <laughs> different sounds in there. But you know, again, I don't need all of this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an EQ8 on here and of course turn off all the filters. And this time, instead of using a low cut, I'm just gonna use a low shelf because some of that stuff, some of that noise can mask things. Noise can actually mask issues in your mix that might be kind of annoying. So let's just go ahead and move this filter around. I put it on low shelf to kind of get a good sound going here. And I'll turn off adaptive Q so I can make this Q nice and smooth, something like this. Okay, now I've got kind of a good sound going there and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna boost the fidelity. So I'll turn on another bell curve here. And I'm just looking for a place that's pleasing. Different noise is gonna have different areas that are gonna sound nice.
kind of really digging that 6K area. Now, of course, this is unbelievably loud, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this way down. I'm going to sneak it back in until I like it, right? So let's go ahead and listen to the whole mix. Beautiful, right there just sounds great. So without it, and then with it. So that's the first way I want to look at using white noise, all right? So definitely download that pack and get some of those samples. They're really nice. Now, the next way I want to look at using noise is inside of this wavetable. This is what the synth sounds like. Now, this synth is, it sounds pretty good. I'd like to get some more attack out of the synth. I'd like it to be brighter just on its attack. Now, one thing I could do, of course, is open the filter frequency. But that kind of adds energy in a way that I don't really want to do. I want this just to have more attack. So what I can do is I can look at oscillator two. I can turn it on, right? So you can turn on and off oscillator two. And in the basics wavetables, they happen to have a white noise setting. Now, this isn't true white noise, okay? There's actually gonna be a tone to this. Take a listen to just this by itself. Right, you can still hear those notes in there. But in order to use this, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn on oscillator one and have oscillator two on as well. If you'll notice really small here, there is a filter routing section, okay? If you have it on serial, so the default mode is serial, so we're going into one filter, then the next filter. The next mode is we're sending both of the oscillators into both filters, and then the next one is split. And split is really cool. What split can do is we can send one oscillator to one filter and another oscillator to another filter. So I hope you can now see what's going on here. So now we'll turn off oscillator two for now, and then I'll turn it on to see what it's adding. Now that's an interesting sound. That's pretty cool. It adds this almost like reverbish kind of sound going on there, especially because again, oscillator two is, remember it's making some tones too, right? But that's not necessarily what I'm going for. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change filter two to be a low pass. I'm gonna turn it on, okay? So now we can kind of control or EQ, if you will, this noise. Let's try this now. Now maybe that's the sound you're going for. This has just got a little bit of filtering to it. There's a hump in a pleasing frequency range, and this might sound nice in the mix. But there's not any movement to that. And I also kind of don't want this noise to be detectable. I kind of want this just to be a percussive element. So the next thing I'll do is, if you'll notice, I have envelope two on a sharp envelope spike right there, right? So what I could do is I could go to my matrix and take filter two's frequency and add it to this envelope. That's starting to sound better, but of course my frequency range is way high, right? So the next thing I'll do is I'll start to dial this down. And by doing this, we're gonna achieve what we were after, trying to get that percussive punch. Now take a listen to this. Okay, so let's just listen to the wavetable by itself without this addition. Now listen. Now, let's say I want a little bit more punch. I could increase the envelope's effect over the filter and get more of a. Now take a listen. And maybe I'll turn the resonance down. Let's go ahead and listen in the mix with it and without it. Now the fun thing about doing this is this can now be a dynamic element. So I can start to bring this up over time, right? Awesome. So real quick, if you've been considering joining my Ableton online courses, this is a great time for you to sign up for the email list because it's Black Friday season. And as we all know, sometimes there's some deals associated with that. So hint, hint, make sure you sign up for that if that's something that you've been wanting to do. In case you don't know about my Ableton courses, I have potentially the most robust Ableton online learning environment that exists. There are over 60 hours of video content just like this, where I'm explaining very specific concepts to you so that you can raise your skills quickly and efficiently. 
Using YouTube is a great way to learn, but it's not very organized and a lot of the times the information is just plain wrong. So if that sounds interesting to you, sign up for the email list. Anyway, let's get back to it. Cool, so let's look at another example. So I'll go to this bass. Let's take a listen to this bass here. Kind of just a basic, simple bass here. What I'm gonna do, instead of focusing on all that I used to make this, I'm just gonna click on the first one, shift click on the last effect here and go to group. What grouping allows me to do is to create chains, okay? And one thing I could do with chains is I could put a noise sample in here and start to add noise to this. So maybe this time I'll go back to my handy tape noise and I'll grab a different type of noise here. Maybe we'll try some raw white noise. So in this case, I'll choose this Juno 60 raw white noise and I'll bring that into the set. So remember, if I just drag a sample into here, anywhere there's a MIDI place, you drag a sample into it, you get a simpler, okay? So let's see just what happens. I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. <laughs> let's just see what happens here. Okay, so we've got the beginning of something. Now at the moment, this noise is receiving the notes that are coming in from this clip, okay? And they're very low. So we're getting this noise to play low. So the next thing that I wanna do in this specific workflow is I wanna grab a MIDI effect. I'm gonna grab just the pitch. I'll put the pitch in here and maybe I'll just make it go up 24 so we're two octaves higher than those original notes. Now, if you take a listen. Now what's fun about this is that because you're playing this in different pitches, we can hear that noise is changing its frequency content. So we have more frequency content here and less down here. Okay, so it's just kind of changing and moving and adding a little bit of movement, right? So the next thing I need to do is I obviously don't want this to just be a flat sample, right? I need to shape the envelope of this. So what I can do is I'll start in classic mode and I'll turn sustain all the way down and I'll work on the decay. Now what I'm gonna do is just to trick my brain into doing this the right way, I'm gonna pull this way down, okay? And I'm gonna to start to reintroduce this. And another thing I wanna say is that I have my wavetable up pretty loud, this second oscillator. So I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit because I don't really need that much. Again, whenever I'm showing you these examples, I'm usually doing more than I normally would just to make sure that you can hear it, okay? So that's down and let's listen to this bass. Nice, okay, so now we've got that bass with that extra little oomph of noise. Without it, with it. Okay, so there we go, that's another example. Now I'm gonna pull this back, back to maybe where I would normally have it, like around maybe negative eight at this point. Awesome, okay, so moving on, let's take a look at these drums. Now a lot of drums are made already with noise in them. If you listen to this clap sample, so yeah, almost all samples that you're gonna download these days are gonna be layers of different samples and there's always gonna be likely some noise in there as well to make these samples really stick out, right? And layering is kind of like the way that we do that. I'm not gonna go over drum layering in this video because that's a whole nother topic in and of itself, but in this situation, I wanna show you something that Ableton has inside of it that's really great for doing this. So let's listen to this kick. I used Ableton's new DS kick thing right here to make this kick drum. Now, this kick drum sounds pretty good. And there's a little bit of top end in there you can hear uh, in the initial transient. But let's say I want some more. One option that I have is to reach for a really interesting device in the drive color section called erosion. So I'm gonna drop an erosion on this kick. Now erosion is really interesting. You can see we have noise, wide noise, and sign. Let's just start with just noise. Okay, so what this basically is, is a white noise sample that's ran through an envelope follower. And this envelope follower is listening to the incoming signal. Okay, so with zero amount, you're not gonna make any difference. but you can choose the frequency that you want to EQ this noise with. You can see how there's this really sharp bell curve here. This is how we can add tuned noise to anything in Ableton, right? This is a really powerful tool. So let's start with something like, yeah, maybe like 2K or something and see if we can add a little bit of oomph to this kick. Let's go ahead and just solo this kick.
Now, to me, we're starting to get somewhere, but that's not really achieving what I want, and it kind of lowers the fidelity of the kick, and I'm not enjoying it. So maybe I should move it up a bit. Now, right around that 5K mark, we can start to hear a little bit of snappiness getting added to this kick. So I can add a little bit more to it. Now the beauty of using erosion is that it's tunable, okay? So maybe this works for the kick drum here at 5K, but let's take a listen to the snare drum. The snare drum sounds pretty good, but it might sound even better if I had a bright noise added to it. So I'll drag and drop an erosion onto there and let's work with this noise here. Now at 7K, it really brings out that snare drum and it's a lot brighter and a lot more thick in the mix. And the reason that erosion is a nice mixing tool is that you'll notice that with the erosion off, the snare drum is the loudest peak happening here. Take a look. When I turn the erosion on, the snare drum is, it's a good sound, but now it's too loud. So I can just take my volume and turn it down, and I'm actually going to gain that benefit of having that bright sample right at the beginning and get a little bit more out of the snare drum without challenging a limiter, right? Boom. Now something else you can try with the snare drum is it's nice to have wide signals with snare drum so we could switch over to wide noise and what this does is the left and the right channel aren't doing exactly the same thing at the same time and so because of that we get this wide burst. Take a listen. So now we have a stereo quality to the snare drum and we could even maybe turn it down a little bit more now. Right? Okay, so the next example I want to show you is a little thing that I came up with. A lot of the times on the master track, you'll have a bunch of effects. Just imagine this is a giant list of effects that we have here. Something else you can do to add some noise to your mix, and maybe some fun noise, is to reach for an echo. So putting an echo on the master track doesn't seem like a good idea most of the time, but we're going to go over to character. And if I turn on noise, we can add some noise. There's a noise machine inside of echo. So I'm going to turn this up. Now I can also turn the dry wet up to make this a little bit louder. And I can filter it. Now, at the moment, if I were to play the music through this, what would happen is it would all get echoed and it would sound very strange. Take a listen. It's definitely not what we're going for, right? Instead, what I can do is I can group this, okay? Now, remember, when you have a group, you can look at your chain list, create another chain, and this could be the dry one, right? So this will be dry, and this is the noise. Cool. Now, if we turn this all the way down, okay, and we give it no input, okay, I'm going to turn this back on, we give it no input, or at least negative 40, hardly anything, we can sneak this back in, and this will be our noise, right? Now we can really hear that noise in there on this track, but this is our dry track, right? This is just, it's just passing the audio right through there, right? Now the reason that this is useful is that if you have a bunch of effects before this, and then you have tape noise within your track, remember that any EQing or anything else that you do to the master track is also going to boost that tape noise. So maybe instead, you'd want to put some noise here on your master track after a bunch of effects, just imagining that there's a bunch of effects over here. Okay, so now another thing you can do with Echo that's cool is you can modulate the filter. Okay, so these two filters can be modulated around and we can get maybe an evolving noise sound. So I'm gonna turn this on and we're gonna start modulating this filter. You can hear it moving around in there. I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit and we're gonna slow this down, unsync it and slow it down. And we can take these completely out of phase with each other or maybe somewhere in between and now we can hear that noise is cascading around, right? Another thing we can do is change the actual character of the noise itself. So we get a brighter noise at 30%. And I should also say real quick that there's a lot more going on under the hood if I pull this back down and listen to the character. Right, this morph knob will morph between different types of noise. 
Let's stick back to that 30%, though. We'll go back here, bring this back up. Now, another thing you can do is you can add a resonant hump to this, which will make that modulation more apparent. You can hear that swirling around. And now, I'll turn this all the way down and mix this back in. And as a final thing, I'll go ahead and turn on this tape noise inside of the track so that we just have the tape noise on the master, and I'll sneak this back in until I like it. Awesome. So I'll just do my classic map the Q key to all the different moves that I made in this video. So muting the noise on the bass, going to the wavetable, muting this oscillator, muting all of my erosions on the kick drum, as well as this snare drum. And then of course on the master. And now we can quickly AB between having white noise in this mix and white noise out of this mix. So here's with it. Here's without it. With it. Without it. And again, of course, <laughs> I wouldn't have as much of this. This would all be dialed back a little bit. But you can feel that subtle, really pleasing enhancement that can happen by using white noise as a mixing tool. Cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. You know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.